So basically, we're going to have some fun right now. And, and the fun part of this is learning what I do to make this more reproducible. Because again, I think there's better surgeons out there. There's people who do a lot more of these than I do. But I need this to come out good. I want my results to be as good as anyone else. Now we're going to also use our solo guide for the first time um, in, in a video so we can show you how to take your learning curve and cut it way down. I draw out my anatomy. I don't care if it's a femur, a big toe, whatever it is, especially when you're doing a minimally invasive technique, understanding where your head is, understanding where your base is, understanding where your incision is, allows you to have visual feedback on top of tactile, on top of uh, fluoroscopy. So the first thing I want to do is set where my cut's going to be. I'm going to be a little bit more dorsal, and I'm going to take my, my fluoro shot, and that's about where I want it, uh, metaphyseal flare. I think it was Becky Serrato did a good paper recently looking at where that capsule, you know, inserts and understanding how far back you have to be from the center of the head. And the whole idea is this is an extra articular osteotomy. You do uh, not want to go too distal, and you don't want to go too proximal. You have to be able to get your screws in a good position. You have to have enough lateral cortex. And so... The things that you want to do also when you are doing this, there's a dorsal medial cutaneous nerve that comes across in this area. So I'm not cutting down to bone per se. I'm going to make a small incision here. Big enough that I'm not burning the skin. You can use a beaver blade. You can use a regular blade. I, I tend to use regular blades because we have more of them. I then spread down. Again, I got a nerve there I want to be careful of. Now I'm going to take a freer. And yes, my skin incision I did under fluoro. And when you start this, you're going to get a lot more fluoro than you normally do. I like that area right there. So I'm going to come across the top. I'm going to feel. I'm creating a working space below my EHL. All right? I'm good. And I'm going to come here, medial wall. But I'm not going underneath. The reason I'm not going underneath is I do not want to destroy the blood supply to the metatarsal head. And so now, again, this is our burr. It's a cutting burr. It's a 20 millimeter burr, two millimeters, and I would have saline cooling. I'm going to do this with no tourniquet. I want the blood to cool the bone. Um, and then when you're using this new tool, it's not like a saw. I hold it either a pencil grip, you can hold it potato peeler grip, either one. I'm going to come in, and again, I'm going to get a new fluoro shot, and I'm happy. That is aiming a little bit distal, maybe a little bit more than I want. So we'll get started here. And you can set it at 6,000. Remember, it's low speed. Um, you don't have to have it at 40,000, 6,000 is where we want to go. You don't have to hit the uh, gas. I, I can come in and I can say, hmm, I don't love that. It's going to shorten it a little bit. That's probably good. So I'm perpendicular to maybe 10 degrees distal, and I'm going to aim down a little bit. Why down? You're going to lose a couple millimeters of bone here when you do any osteotomy. So if I translate a little bit plantar, I'm going to decrease the risk of transfer metatarsalgia. Now I'm going to feel, so I'm starting to use fingers to feel here. And again, I'm not, in, in the real world, I'm going to be operating like this. So my fingers will feel as I come through the bone. But for purposes of the lab, we're going to have to do it on the fluoro machine. I'm feeling, I'm hearing, I'm through. I don't want to be through too far, otherwise I won't have the cutting fluids in the bone. So now, I like that. In the real world, I'll be doing something like this where I'm holding with my fingers. And you can hear, and you can feel and I'm going to pivot at the skin level so I'm not burning the skin. I'm actually pushing it up. I'm not just dropping my hand like this. I'm going to push up at the same time. And I take my time. There's absolutely no rush here whatsoever. Now I'm even going to slow down a little bit because I'm in the harder cortical bone now. And I have these little black marks on the burr, I can see how deep I'm going. And if I'm happy with how deep I am, I use those as a reference. Probably a little bit more than I want to be there, so I'll back up a little bit. Here we go. Now finish off. 
and I'm through. I can hear differently. I can feel with my finger. And now I fall right back into my original cut. And we can take a look if we're not 100% certain. And I'm happy. Errors would be, I'm way through like this. You don't want that because now your cutting flutes aren't in the bone. So we'll pull it back to exactly where we want it, which is right there. Cutting flutes just outside of the bone. When you do your plantar or chevron cut, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm just gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna lay my hand down right on top of the big toe. And I should be through now and I'm, I'm laid down parallel and we'll see if we, if we made it through. Take a quick look here. And I think we're gonna be through. I could use a freer elevator, a translator, whatever I need to feel. And I know I'm feeling it's through right now. And even if I'm gonna use the guide, I want to, to mobilize the head a little bit. And there you go, you can see the head's already moving over. And so one other little trick you can do when you first put your burr there, or you could use a K wire, you can mark out on the skin. AJ, if you can come here for one second, just mark with a marker. Just teaching the surgeons how they can use visual reference. Yep, just straight in line. And so let's say I do that even before I do my cuts. That way I can see and I, I take less fluoro. So these are all the little tricks you can do. But now we're ready to put our guide in there. So let's get our, our guide. Guide has a hook that goes into bone. There's other competitors out there that don't anchor to bone. They go to soft tissue. The beauty of this is it stays where we want it to be. So I need to get into the bone. And the first time you do it, it may be a little bit tricky, but you'll get used to, to feeling something into medullary. And that's why I also went in with my freer at first. And now I think I'm in bone. If I'm not sure, I could take a look. And if they have a big medial eminence, sometimes it's a little bit harder, but let's see if I'm in bone here. If not, I'll just reposition, but I'm in bone. I'm where I need to be. And you saw I came a little bit higher up so that I'm not fighting the medial soft tissues and bone, now I'm in position. So now what I wanna do, there's a couple issues with this specimen. It's somewhat arthritic, so that joint's gonna be a little stiffer. But I wanna be able to derotate. I wanna prevent any type of varus. So as I do that, I'm now putting my head where I want it, and I can pin it to the guide. So you have two options, an upper and a lower hole. And we can take either one is perfectly fine. So AJ, if you can come over and just pin that in the upper hole. Yep, just grip it tight. There it is, you should be through both cortices. And so when I first did this, I did this on an older woman. So above 65, we worry a little bit about osteopenia. To me, this was so much more reproducible than putting in our, our manual um, translators. And so there you are, you're pinned into place. We could back it up a little bit if we need to, but I'm happy with what I'm seeing there. So now the next step is I wanna start going ahead and deciding where do I want to drill my wire. So there's different cartridges we have, and these will slide over our guide. Hold that there, AJ. And then these are these different cartridges. We're gonna have central, we're gonna have lateral, we're gonna have medial. These will plug in to this guide right here. So we have this guide block on now. We have that piece in, and this is what the setup looks like. Okay, so one of the things that you wanna do right from the beginning is understand on the AP whether or not we're gonna have our wire go into the correct spot in the head. 
and so we're, we're pretty convinced of that based upon using the outrigger and basically putting our wire through this hole here and paralleling it over our guide and meaning our guide sleeve. So that's going to go where we want it. The thing that we don't know yet is where is it going to go in the lateral plane? Meaning is it going to go two plantar, two dorsal? Because I can potentially malrotate the guide. So what we're going to do, even though I've drawn out my anatomy, even though I think my guide is sitting directly parallel and in line with my first metatarsal shaft and head, is I need to get uh, an image. And so is the image correct? The answer is it is, because that's your hook. If I take it like this, the hook is off. If I take it like this, the hook is off. But if I'm smack down the center, there I am. One nice thing about the guide, here's my head, here's my shaft, it's in line. The head is not going too dorsal, too plantar, something we had to worry about when we were doing this manually. Now I'm gonna start advancing this wire. I have the wire anchoring the whole guide down in one small area. Now I'm going to advance it. And I'm gonna look with my eyes, is it aiming towards the center of the head, which I can see right here. And if I advance it just enough, I'll see if it's going where I want it down the shaft. And there it goes. So it's going down the shaft nicely. Now I can go back to my AP. It's exiting at what I think is probably a good point. And I think this is going to go into the head well. So I could advance. I feel bone. I'll advance a little more. And I, I'm past where my wire is. That's about as far as I want to go. So on the AP, I'm extremely happy. Let's look at our lateral. Let's see if we're in a good place in the head. And, and one of the nice things about this guide is again, it's radiolucent. And so I can see through. And here I am. I think this is a good profile. Here's my pin in the head. And here is my pin center of head. Here's my head. Here's the tip of my pin. This is ideal as to where I want this. So now we're gonna go ahead and we'll get our second guide wire in there. So we're gonna take our second trocar. Again, it's beveled. I'm gonna slide this down. And the nice thing here is I'm gonna be able to make a second skin incision. So I don't have to necessarily make the, the other skin incision bigger, but I see where it has to go. You can combine them into one incision, two incisions, whatever you want. I'm gonna make a small incision here. I'm gonna take a hemostat and I'm gonna spread down. I'm gonna take my chamfer guide and I'm gonna put it right down to bone here. There it goes. Let's see how we look. I'm happy with that. And now I'm gonna take my wire. Let me take the wire freehand. This is a 0.9 wire. When we did these freehand, it was a lot harder to get this to go where we want. With this system now, with the guide, a lot easier. Again, I, I like to get enough fluoro to get a good feel for this. And so we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this on there. I'm gonna do it slowly, because I don't want it to skive. I feel myself going through the bone, and there I go. Is it going where I want? This is going exactly where I want this to go. Now, again, could this potentially move in the lateral? The answer is maybe. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get another good lateral here. I'm right in line, and you can see it's a good profile. There's my wire. It's gonna go nice in line with my first wire. And I can do this under lateral if I want, AP, whatever it is. There it goes. I'm gonna go a little bit more. Probably right to the articular margin. Let's see if I'm there. Maybe a little past. No, I'm happy with that. And this is really where I like this to exit. This is in the gap between cortex and head. So it finds a nice space right there. I got great spread here and I know they're centered. So the next step will be to drill and place our screws and take depth measurements and all the good stuff. So we're going to take our first big sleeve off, go right down to bone. Here we go. And AJ, we're measuring 54. I'm going to take a little off of this because I want this to sink into bone. So we're going to go to about a 50. I think would be fine here. And we're getting that out now. Okay, so we've measured our depth. 
Now we're gonna drill. So why is drilling important? Because again, this is a fully threaded screw, and if you go through that far lateral cortex with a fully threaded screw and you don't drill it, you can actually distract the head. Now I can leave this on if I want to so I don't mess with the head, and that's perfectly fine at this point. Move our other wire out of the way. All right, let's take a look. Just getting ready to go through that cortex. And remember, a lot of this is feel. Hold that out of the way, AJ. Great, thank you. Right through. I may drill into the head a little bit just to enter, and I'm done. Take a picture, make sure my wire's not coming out. It's not. We'll get our first screw here. Hold the foot for me, AJ, if you could. Yep, come around this way. AJ is not only um, our assistant, our rep, our consultant, our friend, but he's also the cameraman today, which is awesome. He stepped right in. Again, it's a chamfered screw. The screwdriver will tell you when the chamfer is pointing in the right direction because we have a reference line. This bone is somewhat osteopenic, but guess what? You're going to have that in reality sometimes. We'll get a quick check. Wire may be bending a little bit. I'm not too worried about that at this point. The same way if we were doing this freehand, it's going to straighten out in one second. There it is, starting to straighten out. I feel the bone. I can stabilize everything if I want. There's my reference line. I still have a ways to go. Okay, so pretty much done right there. I can go a little more if I want to, but I'm not going to yet. So now I'm gonna take the depth gauge and we're gonna measure for our second wire. This will be our three millimeter screw. Wanna make sure I'm directly down on bone and I'm on bone and I'm measuring 44. So we're gonna go 40, yeah, 40 I think will be fine here. We're gonna drill. I don't wanna drill, over drill this too much. I just wanna have a starting point. Sometimes a wire will pull out and you just find your hole again. There we go. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take a look at my lateral. Am I in a good position in the head? I'm real happy with that. So I'm nicely centered in the head there. Now, when, when you look here, there's two ways you can do this. You have an overhang here. We're gonna take that off. So let's get our guide out of here now. Now the guide will come out here. Rotate it, take it off easier. Am I happy with what I'm seeing? So far happy. I'm gonna turn that screw just a little bit better, get the chamfer in a little better position. There it is, sitting nicely now. Look at my lateral. Sitting beautifully and what I like here is, I'm gonna get a perfect lateral so you can see the sesamoid. She has some arthritis, but here's a, a pretty darn good lateral. Here's my sesamoid, here's my head. There's my plantar cortex, there's my dorsal cortex. I haven't translated the head. It's not up, it's not down, so I'm very happy. Now we have a guide, and the way this guide works is it's going to go over the existing wires and engage the head with the larger wire. So I'll engage my screw. Now I have a guide that will go down over this Get the little wire in the smaller hole. And then the screwdriver here. This will slide all the way down. Now, do I use this every time? No, sometimes I do this freehand, sometimes you can do it with the guide. But basically what this will allow you to do is take a pin, go through here, you'll get right down. So I go down through here, I'm gonna see where this is gonna hit. Now I'll make a little nick in the skin. Okay, now I can pull back knife. There it is. We're gonna make a little cut here. Little spread. 
And again, if you're comfortable freehand, you can freehand this. Get it in my wound. There it is, I'm down to bone. Now I'm gonna slide my guide down. I'm gonna see, does this hit where I want it to? That's pretty good. One of the nice things about having the guide here is you can see I have distance between where I'm gonna cut off my overhang and that screw. One of the errors you can make if you're freehanding this is you get too close to that screw and you cut away all the supporting bone, you lose fixation. I've had that happen one time. So I think this helps a lot. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold the guide and I'm gonna drill this in. And I think, you know, more than just creating a pilot hole, am I happy with where that's gonna take it off? That's beautiful, I love that. So here it is, I'm done with the pilot hole. I can slide all of this off now, take all of this out now. Wire driver. Okay, now I'm gonna take my burr. I'm gonna come through that little hole that I had, find my pilot hole. Go a little distal, there it is. I'm in the hole, I'm gonna enter it. Again, start slow, find your hole, adjust your angle. So I don't like that angle so much, I'll back it up a little bit, bring my hand a little closer to the foot. I like this angle better, there it is and then I'm gonna feel. So again, this is gonna be, I'm gonna be on the table here, and I'm gonna be holding more like this. I'm gonna to feel top and bottom, and we're gonna cut that overhang. I feel, I don't wanna to push too hard dorsally, because that's where the dorsal medial cutaneous nerve is. Felt myself pop through. Now I'm gonna cut plantarly. And we're gonna see if I completed it. If I didn't, I'm gonna put it back in, I'll complete. There it is. So that's exactly what we want when we're done. We collapse it on itself. I use it as bone graft. Let's say I think my medial eminence is, is too big. I can come through one of my incisions here. I could take my medial eminence down. Let's say I need to do a, a soft tissue release. I can go ahead with a beaver blade, get a little picture here. I can make my incision spread down and do my um, uh, sesamoid uh, phalangeal ligament uh, release, whichever release you wanna do, and, and that's it. And then if we're still not happy, we can do our aching osteotomy. Uh, but let's see, final imaging, I'm happy with that. And I'm very happy with that. Nice spread, I definitely don't wanna go any deeper with my screw, but uh, there you go.